Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about Crying of Evil from the new Snake Collection by Stephen Imberluca, which was launched in 2022, and it falls under amber floral category with the main theme of leather. All right, so the name of Crying of Evil comes from the love of Stephen Imberluca for the French poet Le Fleur du Mal by Charles Baudelaire, means the flowers of evil, which Stephen Umberluca changed that to crying of evil for his creation, which starts with a blank canvas where touches of color, musical notes, poetry, and images will complete this textured and pigmented scent. As you all know, Stephen Umberluca and his love for painting, music, and poetry has influenced greatly in creating his work of art. And Crying of Evil is nothing less but inspiration of all these artistic inspirations. Le Fleur du Mal by Charles Baudelaire, The Flowers of Evil, his most famous work, expresses the changing nature of beauty in modern industrializing Paris during the 19th century. A confession of hopes, sex, same-sex love, death, dreams, failures, and sins. The Flowers of Evil attempts to extract beauty from the malignant, the paradox between evil and beauty. All right, so that was a little story behind Crying of Evil or how Crying of Evil was inspired by Stephen Umberluca. And without any further ado, let's spray some of this and see what kind of accords we get. God, I can already smell this. This is so aromatic. Yeah, this thing is very beautiful. It's a sweet fragrance. It's a very unique take on leather, fruity floral. It's definitely not as sharp as God of Fire, but very beautiful. Anyone that likes H Mamba or has tried H Mamba dedicated to Harrods, they will definitely love this one as well. Very beautiful, very addicting. All right, so Crying of Evil is a very beautiful take on leather. It opens up with this tangy, sweet red fruit notes, very dominant on the opening, which must be from red berries. So you definitely get a fruity opening, but with a very strong leather note, so it is not childish fruity, rather erotic fruity because of that leather note. All right, so it's warm, spicy with undertones of sour and sweet nuances, which must be coming from a mix of spices. It's definitely sweeter than God of Fire, but it's not as sharp as God of Fire. As it opens up more, you definitely get a little of this airy and dewy floral note, which starts to make this fragrance kind of powdery, which must be coming from violet. But the violet is not like green Irish tweed or uh, cool water. It's not something where you can definitely cherry pick. Uh, the violet, it's very um, textured. It's, there's pigments and layers of violet in here, which actually it's blended to perfection. All right, there is a green, woody, spicy, carnal, sweet, and indolic nuances in here, but very vague, which has somewhat a very weak, uh, wide floral facet to it. It could be the mixture of tuberose and olibinum. A lot of reviewers get this wrong and call this fragrance smoky. Crying of Evil is not smoky whatsoever, and just because it has olibinum in it, it doesn't make it automatically smoky fragrance. Uh, actually, albinum can have green, woody, and spicy nuances to it, and so can tuberose. Tuberose can have green, woody, spicy, carnal, sweet, and indolic nuances to it with somewhat white floral facet to it, which again can be the mixture of, uh, like I said, tuberose mixed with albinum in here. Even though Crying of Evil opens up fruity and somewhat floral, but it is definitely a leather amber dominated fragrance. It has a huge, beautiful, fruity, floral amber body to it, which as the fragrance goes into the heart, it becomes one with the strong leather cord. The leather in here is not your typical Tuscan leather, but more of a dark old gloves type of leather, kind of more animalic type of leather. 
Yeah, the leather is definitely not smoky at all, but more of castarium type of a leather. So I believe that there might be some synthetic castarium in this as well, because I kind of get the vibe of Woodwood Intense that has castarium in it. Again, they're synthetic, so don't worry about it. But I definitely get that because castarium does create also leather cord as well, but in a very um, fur-like or leather-like type of a... Uh, way not uh, not like in a tar or smoky like like falcon leather more like a different way of a leather kind of more animalic type of a leather which makes it just gorgeous uh now this leather uh like the leather skin of an animal as i mentioned before which also creates a very woody feel to the scent as well but the woodiness is very creamy milky soft sturdy rich and definitely powdery which must be the combo of leather and gorgeous sandalwood all right so let's talk about the rose okay this is very important because the dose of rose used in here is extremely little just to add some beauty to this animalic leathery woody fragrance especially when it gets to its heart so don't think you will spray this fragrance and you will get your cliche rose and leather type of an accord in here all right, so this one is going to blow you guys away because um, it was not mentioned in the notes. And uh, as always, I tested the fragrances a lot, Crying of Evil, because I love it so much. I tested it on my skin and on paper just to see how it performs, the life cycle of it, how it's different than on paper and on your skin and so on. And I realized that there was something in it that was not mentioned in the notes. Um, and I kind of figured out what it was, but I wanted to make sure and I wanted to confirm that. So I reached out to Stephanie Berluca and I pushed and pushed to get it out of him. And I told him, I said, you know, I get this transparent, dry, woody and cedar like with aspects of ambergris, uh, vetive and patchouli and a slight phenolic nuances. And I was wondering where that came from. I told him that. And I mean, I know there is patchouli in here, but this feels very transparent. And I realized these are the characteristics of ISO E Super. And he definitely confirmed that. He said, yes, he used ISO E Super in Crying of Evil like he did in Generation 2022. So yes, believe it or not, there is a big dose of ISO E Super in Crying of Evil and it actually helps the rest of the composition of this fragrance radiate from the skin really nicely and adds an oomph to the velvety and violet effect of crying of evil the dry down of crying of evil is pretty much a strong sweet fruity slash floral amber cord heavy on iso e super with light leather animalic woody nuances with a nice dose of patchouli and musk Crying of Evil is a very erotic and sexual fragrance and I really adore and enjoy it for that reason. So all in all, what you get with Crying of Evil is a big amber cord. It is warm, spicy, definitely fruity more than floral, especially on the opening. It has a big dose of leather in it. It is woody, powdery, animalic, definitely sweet, tiny bit floral. And the floral comes obviously from violet and rose, but I want you to think of that uh, or of those notes like the violet and rose more of like pigments and layers than the actual notes where you can cherry pick them. And on the dry down, you get a nice dose of patchouli. All right, so let's get to the notes of Crying of Evil and see what we got. Top notes, we have red berries and we got a big dose of it on the opening. We got spices, violet and tuberose. Middle notes, we have leather, rose sandalwood base notes we have amber olibanum patchouli and musk all right so let's talk about the performance and longevity of crying of evil well uh crying of evil because it's a leather fragrance and it has iso e super in it it's a very long lasting fragrance um, I would say God of Fire, it's longer lasting, but this one is right up there. So on my skin, I get easily between nine to 10 hours with Crying of Evil, which the ISO E Super makes it last longer on the skin. But if you want it to last longer, I would definitely suggest you guys to spray it on your clothes. Then you would definitely get 15 to 20 hours of the performance. So as far as the projection sillage goes, I would definitely give it a high score. 
All right, so let's talk about the projection and sillage. It has a fantastic projection on the initial spray. I could easily about five to six speed. The ISO E Super definitely helps with the projection of this fragrance, especially when it's on your skin and as you start sweating, it projects phenomenal. Uh, but again, because of the concentration of the fragrance, after half an hour to 45 minutes, it gets closer to the skin, but stays strong that way for nine to 10 hours. So as far as the projection sillage goes, I would definitely give it a high score. All right, so let's talk about the compliments of Crying of Evil. Crying of Evil gets a lot of compliments. Now, it probably doesn't get as much as God of Fire, but it gets a lot of compliments. I mean, it is a gorgeous leather fragrance. It's very beautiful. That fruity floral accord to it with that beautiful amber cord, God, it makes it so mass appealing. And it's such a unisex fragrance. And I tested this a lot and I got a lot of compliments with this one, even though it's starting getting hot here, but it got a lot of compliments. So as far as the compliments goes, I would definitely give it a high score. All right, so let's get to the versatility of Crying of Evil. Um, because of the leather note and because it's such a sweet fragrance and that amber cord and this, you know, even though there are floral and fruity notes in it, I would say this would do phenomenal uh, during fall and winter time. Uh, again, when it comes to versatility, it's such a subjective topic to talk about uh, because a lot of people say, well, there's uh, fruity and floral notes in here and I can definitely pull this off during the summertime as well. And why not? You definitely can do that. But I would personally, for myself, I would wear this more in fall or winter time. Uh, it's definitely one of those fragrances that's very romantic, it's very erotic, so it would do great for dating, for a night out, even clubbing, it would do fantastic. Um, it's actually pretty versatile when it comes to where to wear this. Um, so it's a pretty versatile fragrance. Uh, you can you know wear this dressed up and you can wear this dressed down so it's actually really good when it comes to that so as far as the versatility goes actually i would give it a medium to high score all right so let's get to the uniqueness of crying of evil well crying of evil definitely is a very very unique leather fragrance it's very unusual in its structure uh the violet and rose uh notes are not really notes they're more of pigments and textures in this fragrance and the leather is so unique it's definitely not smoky again crying of evil is not a smoky fragrance and it just uh what makes it again also very erotic is that iso e super just the way it radiates from your skin makes it very unique a uh, leather fragrance again, because of the use of also ISO E Super. So as far as the uniqueness goes, I would definitely give it a high score as well. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we get to know my video. That's all I have for Crying of Evil. If you own Crying of Evil, please let me know in the comment section what's your take on it. And if you don't own it, I'm telling you, this is a very unique take on leather notes. Uh, it's just done very different. It's very unusual in structure. And if you own H Mamba, and if you like the H Mamba, I'm telling you, you're gonna fall in love with this one. And that's it, you guys. That's all I have. Thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.